Hey friends, thanks so much for joining me today. We're gonna look at the lathe, we're gonna look at what it does, and we're gonna talk about the different parts of it. All right, folks, so this is our metal lathe. Now, this one is a lot smaller than one that I learned on, but it still does the same function. It still turns a piece of metal at a uh, decent rate of speed and allows you to do different operations on it. So the first thing we need to do is talk about what these pieces are called so we can understand that we're talking about the same things. So number one, this is your headstock. This piece is what holds your metal and allows it to turn. So the headstock, you will um, put your metal in and out with a chuck key. This chuck key goes in to the slots and turns counterclockwise to loosen it or turns clockwise to tighten. Now this is a three jaw chuck, which means it has three jaws. One, two, three. When I turn this, all three of those jaws will move at the same time. We also have a four jaw chuck, but on the four jaw chuck, when I turn one of these screws, two of the jaws will turn, and then when I turn another one, the other two jaws will turn. So that's why I like the three jaw chuck for beginners, because they don't have to make sure and use a dial indicator and um, set those jaws to where they're absolutely in the right position. That's a skill that I think comes later on. For the first, the beginner, we use a three jaw chuck. Okay, so now with the lathe, let's go over some just general safety stuff. One thing, you don't have, want anything hanging or dangling. A lot of times I use my earbuds as um, noise reducers or earplugs, and I'll let them hang here. You don't wanna do that with the lathe, and you don't even want any little hangy things that could catch. This thing, if it catches, it will suck you in. It's very, very powerful. So you don't want anything hanging. A lot of times I'll take off my hoodie and I'll put an apron where there's nothing on the front. So make sure that there's nothing that can grab. Definitely always have to have safety glasses. You always have to have that. And sometimes when you get a bunch of chips build up, wear some gloves to get all those chips out of there. You don't wanna just grab those metal chips and have it embed itself into your skin. So those are a couple of the safety things um, you definitely want to make sure one of the most important things is your eyes because things could fly off of here and make sure there's nothing hanging that could be grabbed. All right, the next thing we need to talk about is the carriage. The carriage can move forward or back depending on what you want to do. And it has increments These increments can be seen and we can know exactly how far we are going in when we turn this. For the beginner, that's not as um, critical as just learning how this thing works. Okay, so this is the carriage. This is the cross slide. The cross slide goes in and out. Okay, so if we have a, uh, like a geometric grid, we have an X axis and a Y axis. So we have one that moves this way, one that moves this way. This is your carriage. This is your cross slide. This is your compound. This can be turned at different angles and allow you to produce tapers on whatever piece you're working on here. Now, next thing we have, this is a turret style work holder. Now, not all of them are like this. So this turret style work holder has four places on here that you can hold your cutters. So we can have multiple different cutters at the same time in here so we can quickly switch what we're doing. So the way this turret works is if you move this counterclockwise, 
then you can rotate around to the different cutters. So you can see here, we have one for turning. This is a carbide insert on this work holding piece. This one is also a carbide insert. This one is for turning. Turning is cutting along the length. This one is for facing, or no, excuse me, for parting. Parting is when you're cutting it off. You're cutting off that piece. This one, you can see the shape of that cutter. This is for threading, making threads on this piece. And this one also is for turning, for reducing material off the length here. Now, this one and this one could also be used for facing. Facing is an operation where we make this end flat. One big thing you have to do when you have these tools is you have to make sure it's on center. One way you can easily do that is by taking the tail stock, which is this piece right here. This is the tail stock. This tail stock, you can take out the Jacob's chuck, which is what this is, this is a Jacob's chuck that holds a drill bit or a center drill. You can take this out you can put in a center, you can put that in here, and that'll show you if you bring your tool up to that center, it'll show you if this is the correct height up and down. So let's go ahead and let's do that. We're gonna take this and loosen it. We're gonna bring this back, and by bringing that back, this has a taper on it, and it's bringing this piece back, pushing against something in here, and taking this off the taper. So we'll set our chuck aside. We'll bring this out a little bit. And the way you insert this is you just take it and push it in there. And it's a taper, so it seats itself in there. So now we're gonna come out here. I'm gonna bring it out a little bit. And then I'm going to see how close to on center I am. I'm gonna lock that down so I know it's in the place where it would be working. I'm gonna come over here. And we're looking right here. And right now, I would be just a smidge below. So one way you can tr test that out to see if this is on center, if my cutter is centered on the very middle of the piece, is I'm gonna take this little steel ruler, put my piece in the chuck, bring my, don't drop it, bring my cutter in here, press it against the part, and now I'm gonna look, and if this is straight up and down, it's on center. To me, if I'm gonna look, here, it looks like it's angled a little bit away at the top and a little in. I mean, that's exaggerated, but it's de it's absolutely going like this. Not so much that much, but it's back up here and it's not straight up and down. So what that tells me, if this top is leaning towards me, that means this cutter head is too low and needs to be lifted up. If, if it were like this, where the top is away from me, that would mean my cutter head is too high. And so what I need to do now is I need to get some little shim material. So I need to get some little shim material and shim under this cutter head and then put these screws back in to make sure it's 100% on center. All right, so now we've looked at the chuck, we've looked at the carriage, we've looked at the tail stock. Now let's look at some of the controls on here. So in this uh, lathe, we have a forward, a stop, and a reverse. Right now it's in stop, but it will turn on if I go ahead and turn it to forward or reverse. If I want a, an emergency stop, I can push that red button in and it will not, not turn on. If I pull it out 
and turn it and take that off of the emergency stop, then I can turn it on forward, stop, or reverse. What I have to do is say, we're good to go, green, and then I can turn it on. So whenever the emergency stop gets pressed, even after pulling it out, in order to turn it on, you have to push the green button to say, yep, we're good, everything is a go. Okay, so now we have under here, we have different settings. These are to change the speed of So right now I'm in a 1A, and so in A1, I'm at a lower speed. So um, this controls the lead screw. This thing right here is called the lead screw. If I wanna change the speed of the chuck, I have to do it by changing pulleys. That's one thing I'm not super fond of on this lathe compared to the other bigger ones that I've learned on. And the reason it has the pulleys is this is just a, uh, a less expensive lathe. So when you get to where you can change the speed by just moving some knobs, you get a lot more gears and stuff, you get a lot more cost included. This one's a less expensive uh, lathe, and so we don't have so many different choices on our speeds. So right now I have it set, I know it's kind of hard to see. Right now I have it set on the lowest speed. I'm at BC1, 150. So these, all of these settings will change your lead screw. The lead screw is used to move the carriage at a certain rate. So we're gonna go ahead, make sure this is on, turn on forward. Now you see how fast this lead screw is turning? We can change that by changing these. But I want it fast because I want to show you what it does. This knob right here will lock on that lead screw and it'll turn the whole carriage. So we can lock it on the lead screw and now you can see how it's turning the whole carriage moving it this way. That's a really nice feature for when we're turning down a long bar or a long taper or whatever we're doing. It makes it nice and consistent. So one thing you have to be aware of when you do that is you can't look away, you can't walk away from the machine because this will feed it all the way into this chuck and it will destroy your machine. So you can't walk away, you've gotta be very focused when you are working with this and you're using the lead screw to feed into the part. So there you go, folks. This is like a basic introductory of what our lathe is. One last thing, these things right here are called the ways. These are how the carriage rolls on this lathe. These are finely ground, honed. So we don't set tools on here. We don't um, abuse this. If we ever do any filing, where we have a file on this thing, we put paper towels over this to protect our ways. And we take off the, the chips with the brush. We can just brush them on, brush them off so that we're not making grooves in this stuff. Okay, friends, so one thing you always wanna make sure you do is you never take your hand off the chuck key while it is in the chuck. Now, the old ones I used, they didn't have this spring. I really like this spring for new beginners because you can't leave that in the chuck. It will push itself out. But if you go to a lathe that does not have a spring on the chuck key, remember your hand does not leave the chuck key while it is in the chuck because if that gets left in there and then it gets turned on, this becomes a projectile and that's a bad day. So make sure you tighten up your workpiece and then set your chuck key to the side. Now, sometimes I'll set up, set tools up here that I'm working with very frequently, but as a rule of thumb, stuff shouldn't sit up here that could vibrate down and fall on your, on your ways. All right, folks, so there we go. There's an introduction to the lathe. We're gonna do a lot more on this. I'm gonna show you a whole bunch more different operations. I really enjoy using this thing. It's a lot of fun. 
But when you use it, you have to make sure you're thinking and you're working hard doing the mental operations and you're not just goofing off or just in your head somewhere. You gotta pay attention. So work hard because hard work is its own reward. And thanks for watching.